my dear class 8 students today we are going to have english and today i am going to teach you the th third chapter and it is a poem the na nature the gentlest mother okay it's the poetist is emily dickson okay so let's talk about emily dickson let's focus on her so her actual name full name is Emily Elizabeth Dickson okay she was like she was an american poetess she was born on 10th of december 1830 at amherst massachusetts in usa okay and she was fond of uh, nature natural things and she like most of most of his poems okay was based on the nature and today we are going to learn one of her poems the nature gentlest mother okay here in this poem nature gentlest mother like in the diction the poet has personified our beautiful nature with our mother okay it is a personification personification is like it's a figure of speech where human qualities are given to animals objects or the or ideas okay personification means any like living or non living objects are given a new like human form that is called personification so this new figure of speech personification we are going to learn today okay so she has Emily Dickson has described a beautiful nature is like our mother. Okay, so you know mother is the greatest gift in our lives. Yes or no? Without mother, we cannot imagine our life. Yes or no? Every like in every situation, mother has to be there by our side. Okay, so let's see. so there are in the poem there are six stanzas okay each stanza there are four lines okay so today we are going to learn only three stanzas okay so first stanza say nature the gentlest mother is impatient of no child the feeblest or the waywardest her admonition admonition mild okay there are two difficult words that is way uh, way wardest and admonition so way wardest okay way wardest means it's a stubborn way wardest means a stubborn okay like independent having a independent kind of mind doing their own likes and this thing independent okay so admonition means a firm warning okay a strong warning so see on the first stanza what the first stanza says nature is calm and patient with her children she is patient with her children who are feeble and strangers strangers mean the waywardest so see whatever the whether the children are feeble means the weakest or the waywardest or the stubborn or the strongest are there okay she does not discriminate among her children so she means the mother earth do not discriminate any of her children even her tone of admonition or scolding is mild admonition is like scolding okay mother earth is scolding to her children also but it in a mild way mild in a soft way okay nature is portrayed as caring mother who is devoted to her children and loves every single being that belongs to her without any discrimination so see mother is so devoted like our mother they are so devoted to their children yes or no they will be looking after mothers will be running after looking after their children likewise our mother earth is always looking after us okay the usage of mother figure for the nature nature is the personification of the motherly characters to the nature itself so we have already 
discuss that the mother nature nature is personified as the mother okay i hope you understand the first stanza okay let's move to the second in forest and the hill by traveler be heard restraining rampant squirrel or too impetuous bird so here in the forest and the hill it means forest and the hills are also part of the nature yes so by travelers or be heard means travelers means the human beings okay like we go to the forest and the hills we try to explore it we want to enjoy the beauty of the nature okay restraining rampant squirrel but see like see humans are also nature's children but they tend to destroy the nature so human beings like travelers they go to enjoy the nature but they tend to destroy or they tend to harm the part of nature therefore we see that mother nature is hushing down and restraining the rampant squirrel or the erratic bird so that the humans do not harm them or to be enticed by, by them so mother nature okay looking when the uh, humans are approaching to the nature okay approaching to the hills and the forest mother earth is just rushing down to the children okay children is like see squirrel rampant squirrel and the erratic bird bird so they were like squirrel means, means i think they were making some kind of noise squeaking and the birds were also making lots of noise they were nicely singing in the forest okay so mother nature is warning them do not to make noise because the human beings okay humans are going in the forest and they tend to destroy them or they tend to harm them another notion that might be depicted is the fact that the travelers are found to explore only the hills and the forest we have already done so therefore the mother nature has to ensure that the humans do not do something negatively impact on her children in the name of invention and exploration so mother nature has to ensure that her children are okay so that the human beings they when they are going to the forest they sh they are not going to harm any of her children okay the animals are said to have stopped making noise so animals their children mother nature's children okay are like they are warned not to make noise once the humans approached yes so let's move to the the third stanza how fair her conversation a summer afternoon her house hold her assembly and when the sun go down so see in the third stanza the focus is back on the nature where emily dickson praises the working of the nature and her aspect so on the third stanza we'll see okay the creation of the nature and its working how the nature is constantly working okay so nature survives through every season and change nature has to survive every season whether it is winter summer or anything the words household there are two words that household and the assembly what it means household and assembly hold strong point because nature is personified as a mother so therefore like a mother's asset of household nature looks looks after her assembly assembly means children okay and household means greenery okay greenery all the hills and these things are the household okay and the last line again i'm going to repeat and when the sun goes down and when the sun goes down it is the like see the last line of the stanza and the sun goes down gives a continuation of the next para so we are going to do the next para next time so this is the continuation of the next para okay shifting the setting to the end of the day as the sun goes down it is the starting of the next para and it also symbolizes the end of the day that is the setting of the sun is the end of the day okay so the new words today we have learned in the lesson is the admonition 
okay it means a firm warning a strong warning impetuous means likely to act rashly rashly means abruptly okay personification already we have learned so let's recapitulate whatever we have learned today okay today we have learned the new poem that is the nature the greatest mother by who by emily dickson okay she was an american poet she was born in 10th of december 1830 in usa massachusetts and usa okay so first second and uh, third stanza we have done on the first stanza we'll see how the mother uh, mother earth is warning okay warning and scolding the scolding his children mildly but okay on the second stanza we we'll saw we had done that the travelers or the human beings they tend to destroy the nature but how mother earth is rushing towards the children to ensure that the all his children are safe okay on the third or the last stanza we have done that the mother mother earth has to like household and the assembly okay household means children okay household means is greener greener means trees and the plants and the assembly means is children children means all the living things from right from living organisms small living organisms to all the animals okay this much for today so next three stanzas we are going to continue in the next class thank you